Gather Christians, let us celebrate. Gather Christians, the Lord we now await. Gather Christians, be holy comes. Rejoice and sing, for the Lord is King. Let us all now as one community praise and honor the Trinity. Let us all now with one accord sing on the praise to the living Lord. Gather Christians, let's now celebrate. Gather Christians, the Lord we now await. Gather Christians, be holy cause, rejoice and sing, for the Lord is King. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Welcome all who join us through the media as we gather this day to celebrate this feast of St. Andrew the Apostle, brother of, of, well, that's not why he's holy, but he's brother of Simon Peter. Holy because in his own way he was a faithful disciple. We ask the Lord now to look on us in that mercy that only God can pour forth, that divine mercy and to prepare us to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. We humbly implore your majesty, O Lord, that just as the blessed apostle Andrew was for your church a preacher and pastor, so may he may be for us a constant intercessor before you. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. If your lips confess that Jesus is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. By believing from the heart, you are made righteous. By confessing with your lips, you are saved. When scripture says those who believe in him will have no cause for shame, it makes no distinction between Jew and Greek. All belong to the same Lord who is rich enough, however, Many ask his help, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But they will not ask his help unless they believe in him, and they will not believe in him unless they have heard of him, and they will not hear of him unless they get a preacher, and they will never have a preacher unless one is sent. But as scripture says, the footsteps of those who bring good news are a welcome sound. Not everyone, of course, 
listens to the good news. As Isaiah says, Lord, how many believed what we proclaimed. So faith comes from what is preached, and what is preached comes from the word of Christ. Let me put the question, is it possible that they did not hear? Indeed, they did. In the words of the psalm, their voice has gone out through all the earth and their message to the ends of the world. The word of the Lord. Their word goes forth through all the earth. The heavens proclaim the glory of God, and the firmament shone forth the work of his hands. Day unto day takes up the story, and night unto night makes known the message. No speech, no word, no voice is heard, yet their span goes forth through all the earth their words to the utmost bounds of the world. Follow me, says the Lord, and I will make you into fishers of men. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were making a cast in the lake with their net, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you into fishers of men. And they left their nets at once, and they followed him. Going on from there, he saw another pair of brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in their boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. At once, leaving the boat and their father, they followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Once we, we, we know that once we did not exist. We know that once there was nothing you could point at and say, there's Adam or there is Adana or there is whoever else, any of us, none of us. There was, not, there was nothing you could point at and say, there's so and so, there's so and so. And out of that nothingness, God called us into life. Out of that nothingness, God called us into life. As Psalm 139 says, he looked at us as we took shape in our mother's womb, as we were knit together. God was there, and God brings us, called us into life. God then called us through the waters of baptism into life with God, the spiritual life. God called us. And our whole life is, as it were, a series of calls from God to draw deeper and deeper into his His. his community, his people, the body of Christ, the church. He calls us to be disciples. We live out that discipleship in different ways. We might live out that discipleship as a single person. We might live out that discipleship as a married person. We may live out that disciples as a consecrated, ordained person. Each war, each state of life can be a call from God. And how we live out that call, how we live out our lives as a single person, how we live out our lives as a married person, how we live out our lives as a consecrated person is our response to God. And that's why, you know, we have to take all our 
life seriously and to recognize that it's not just a matter of, of going through life without thinking, but of going through life recognizing that our lives have meaning, that our lives are going somewhere, our lives are coming to the fullness of life with the Lord. But for that to happen, we have to be faithful disciples, faithful to the call that God has given each one of us. And, you know, and so, so, you know, as a husband, as a wife, that's a call from God. It's not just a matter of, you know, um, well, I'll get married, yes, but so what? We're answering a call from God. And we have to live out that life as best we can. Now, oh, yes, because human beings are, are weak and human beings are broken in different ways, the different problems along the way. But to live out that life as, as best we can because it is our offering back to God. It's our response to God. As a priest, as a consecrated person, as a single person, whatever, how I live my life as a priest is my response to God. Because I'm, that's how I'm living out my discipleship. That's how I'm following God. I'm following the Lord as a priest in this life. And how I do it is, well, is a yes, a big yes, a small yes, a medium less and know whatever the case may be to God. And that's why we have to take our lives seriously. You know, that it all has meaning. In today's, um, today we celebrate the feast of Andrew, St. Andrew. St. Andrew had a call from the Lord also. Out of nothingness, God called him into life. And God calls him, we don't know how Andrew lived and so on, but then God called him, as we heard in today's reading, Jesus calls, come, follow me. And, and his response to God is to follow. He gets up at once, we read, and followed Jesus. Well, he followed him well enough to be a saint today. He followed him well enough to be one of the chosen 12. He followed him well enough, tradition has it, that he, him, he himself was crucified on an on a X-shaped cross. The, was it an upside down cross? X-shaped cross. The, and that, that, so, he, so Andrew was faithful to his call. We pray that through his intercession, we too may be faithful to the call that God has for us and faithful to our following of the Lord. Our prayers of intercession. Almighty God, we pray for the church throughout the world that everywhere, oh Lord God, your people might grow in holiness, that everywhere, Lord, your people may recognize their lives as a response to your call that everywhere, Lord, your people may be joyful because you have called. Lord, hear us. Lord, we pray for all of those who have taught us the faith, all those, Lord God, who have led us on the way of faith. We know we believe, Lord God, as a reading told us, because we heard. We thank you, Lord, for all the people through whom we heard of the faith and all those who taught us by life, by their life example or by teaching. We ask your blessing on them. Those who have gone before us, may they know the joy of eternal life, the reward of their lives, Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord God, we thank you for all your blessings. We thank you, O Lord God, for the blessings bestowed on, on those who have asked us to pray for them, O Lord. We ask that you may accept their gratitude and you may continue to pour down your blessing. Lord, hear us. For the gift of life, we thank you. For that call into life, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for those who celebrate birthdays and those, Lord God, for whom we've called, been asked to pray today. We thank you, Lord. They know the preciousness in your sight. And may this year ahead be filled with your blessing and goodness. Lord, hear us. Almighty God, we remember all whom you have called. And Lord God, for whom that call has become a faint echo. Renew that call, Lord, that they may hear again and follow you more devotedly, more faithfully. We pray for those who have heard your call and rejected it, O Lord. We ask, O Lord God, that in your love you may draw them back to you. Lord, hear us. Almighty God, eventually, Lord, you call us from this life to the fullness of life with you. We remember those who have gone before us, Lord, for whom we've been asked to pray. Lord, may they know the beauty of your face, the joy of your presence. Lord, hear us. 
Almighty God, we thank you that you hear our prayer. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Almighty God, that through these offerings, which we bring on the feast day of St. Andrew, we may please you by what we have brought and be given life by what you have accepted. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so they may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so, Father, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. And once more giving thanks, gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, for death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray 
that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Jason our Bishop, the entire people you've gained for your own. Remember too, Lord, Lucy, welcome them into the light of your face. Father, have mercy on us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Andrew, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now at the Savior's command, and for my divine teaching, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us now share with those near us a sign of the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, you shall enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, at this time, those right here in the chapel will receive Jesus sacramentally in Holy Communion. You're invited to join us and make your own spiritual communion, to join your hearts with us, those of you who may be alone at home, or those of you who may be going through some kind of struggle in your life. Whatever it is, the Lord comes to you right now. He pours his healing love upon you, and he beckons to you. Enter into this time and allow the Lord to minister to you his healing love. And as we pray, join me in prayer. My Jesus, I believe you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I now cannot receive you sacramentally, Come spiritually into my heart. 
As though you have already come, I embrace you, Lord, and I unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. O divine Savior, O Jesus, O blessed sacrament. Let us pray. May communion in your sacrament strengthen us, O Lord, so that by the example of the blessed Apostle Andrew, we, who carry in our body the death of Christ, may merit to live with him in glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended go and announce the good news.